Mic check. Coffee check. Water check. Recording check. What's up, people? Case West here, uh, back with Better Call Saul. This is episode four, Hit and Run. Um, you know what? Let's look at let's let's write these down real quick and see if we can't come up with something. What was the first one? Wine and roses. Uh, carrot and stick. Rock and a hard place. Hit and run. So we've got W R C S R H P H. Well, I can tell you right now, there's not uh, any vowels, so that's going to be hard to spell shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe we're just looking too much into this. I, I have really um, enjoyed reading the comments, everybody speculating on everything, but the titles is something that, I mean, obviously there is a pattern, but maybe... Maybe it doesn't spell anything. And maybe it's something we can't see until the end. Alright, so... Obviously, this is going to be the first episode without Nacho. So, bummed out about that. But, and so, somebody made a comment that was spot on. It said something along the lines of... And I'll, I'm paraphrasing. I didn't realize how... Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. Basically, they were saying that um, uh, Nacho's storyline had become the focus point for them, and they didn't realize it until he died. And honestly, I don't think I realized that either. Uh, it's kind of amazing that this is not Nacho's show. It's Better Call Saul, and so much of it was focused around what's going to happen to Nacho, which is probably why they had to kill him off, or at least end his storyline uh, early, because now they've got to focus on Kim and Jimmy and this plan and what's going to happen to them moving forward. Um, I was thinking more about <clears throat> the scene where Kim, you know, the, the other um, lawyer... The prosecutor pulled Kim aside, told her about uh, Nacho, or excuse me, Lalo, and that um, if Jimmy didn't know that Degu's mom was actually Lalo, then technically he could, the, uh, the confidentiality wouldn't apply. Now, I don't know if Jimmy has told Kim that he slipped up and said Lalo's name. Because in the scene where they were discussing it, um, Kim said, well, and, and kind, of, uh, kind of suspiciously, when Jimmy asked, what should we do? Kim said, you should do what you feel like. And I caught that when I watched it. That is not the first time that's happened in, um, I forget what season. It might have been, no, I don't think it was last season. Maybe season four. Maybe it was last season. When, uh, yeah, I think it was last season. When Kim is mad at Jimmy and Jimmy grabs her before she's on her way uh, in the morning she's on her way to work he he grabs her takes her on a detour and they go look at the house that he that he wants to buy eventually and she's mad at him um because he has basically forced her hand at that point and created this um basically pulled a, a slipping jimmy on her client and she went with it but she was upset because she went with it because she knew it would work but she kind of got blindsided, and she doesn't want to do that to her clients. I think that was like, that might have been the first episode, actually, of season five. Um, but there was a lot of Jimmy saying, we, 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 and Kim saying, I and you, 
And then by the end of the episode, she said, we, you know, kind of confirming that she was back on, on his side, back on his team. And I think that's what she did in the previous epi episode as well. And these writers, they, they do shit like that. They're not stupid. They, they throw that stuff in there. It, it's a excellent way to give us an insight into how these characters are thinking. But back to the point, if, if Saul didn't tell Kim that he slipped up and said Lalo, is he going to tell her? And if I'm him, I mean, the fact that he slipped up, he knows that now they know he knew who Lalo was. I mean, I guess he could always say he didn't know that De Guzman was Lalo when he uh, represented him, and he found out later, and that's why he slipped up. But when he slipped up and she said, who's Lalo? He acted like he was getting him confused with another client. So he's caught. They know that he knows. And if Kim knew that they knew that he knew, <laughs> she surely would say, okay, well, now you have to play ball with them. But at the same time, can they prove it? That's what it comes down to is what I, what I think that Jimmy and Kim would say is if they can't prove it, then good luck to them. But I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going to happen there. Um, on the Lalo front, we don't know where he is. You know, we saw some shots of him in the trailer, and he was, it looked like he had grown his hair out a little bit. He was in a suit. Obviously, he's got a plan. I'm wondering if we're not going to see him in some, like, business capacity. You know, now he's he's going to have a new identity. I'll just tell you what I'm thinking off the top of my head and what I think would be a good fuck you to Gus. If he were to create a new identity and invest, become an investor in Pollo Hermanos, I think that would be a good way for him to keep track of Gus's uh, comings and goings. You know, when they first met, and Nacho brought Lalo into one of Gus's restaurants and he was, you know, pretending to not know what was going on. He asked if Gus was interested in franchising. So I think that would be uh, interesting if he showed up in that capacity and maybe uh, it became an investor in and maybe not even in um, uh, his restaurant, maybe in uh, what's the, the parent company, Madrigal Electromotive or Madrigal. I don't know if whatever the, the, the parent company's called. Um, and, you know, in the last season, uh, between there was a, a scene between Gus and Schuler. I forget his first name, Hans, maybe. Um, and I wonder if we're going to get more backstory on that. And is Hank going to show back up? I'm also curious to see if Hank is going to play a bigger role in this season. I don't know. There's just a lot of shit. You know, like I said, the fact that they had to get rid of uh, Nacho early in the season tells me that it's it's going to be pretty wild from here on out and complicated. And they just had too many storylines going. But, ah, shit, I've been talking way too long. Um... I could sit here and speculate on this shit all day, which is half the fun. Uh, but anyways, let's just jump into it. What do you think we should do? Do you want to be a friend of the cartel, or do you want to be a rat? We, what and you. you learn? Lalo Salamanca lives. Don't want to see kids on bikes. Don't want to see kids, period. Okay, not kids. Just the trim. Of all the colors, why would you pick that? Use Adobe Red if you want red. I like that color. What do you even call that? They're poor neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I like that color. These are interesting shots. There are at least security cameras. That place isn't even a mountain view. It's Enchantment Hills over there. Enchantment Hill starts at Pinion Lane. Remember when the Westlakes planted those quaking aspens? That whole mess? God, I hate HOAs. I'll never be a part of one. Because I'm poor. Really? Where'd you hear that? What in the fuck? Robbie Davis, baby. Is that iced tea? Would you like some? Well, sir. Thank you, man. What in the hell is going on? Is that uh, Jimmy's house that we saw in the opening of season one or of uh, episode one? Or is that Gus's house? Was that Gus's house? I... Damn, I can't remember. What a good opening. Hit and run. I wonder if that has anything to do with uh, season one, episode one. When uh, Tuco's grandma hit and ran. All right, Howard. You got to know that they're up to something. Cheryl still won't talk about anything important. You tried what we discussed? Yes. Yes, I did. But... Yeah, we don't know anything about his home life. Is he I married? a dream. Oh, that's Jimmy. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> he looks ridiculous. That's hilarious. Oh, that's a awesome camera work. Oh, they're going to hit and run with his car. Are they going to get the two skateboarders? Kim. Oh, shit. Any traffic? Oh, this makes me so nervous. Mmm, beautiful. Hey, is this... We're at Wendy's stopping ground? Is that her? Hey, 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 hey. That's her? Disgusted. I put two quarters in. <laughs> I will buy you an entire case when you're done. Here we go. Right in. I'm so nervous. I'm sure you've heard something about my son's drug problem. Gregory's struggle gave me a more, let's say, personal view of the legal system. Oh, shit. Kim, I think you've got something here. Damn, so his son... So he's got a... personal connection with you can't uh, drugs. The support staff. They're the beating heart of the operation. I know that's true in our office. Jesus. You son of a bitch! You twisted heavy That's fucking hell hilarious. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, I don't know what happened. 
happen so fast? Microsoft OneDrive, I'll kill you. Oh, I got a bad feeling now. Yeah. Yeah. We well, not gonna be able to put it in the ground. No way. <laughs> no way. Oh my god. He didn't even notice. Bo. That kills business for the rest of the day. Always hassling me. Oh, that's the car that. Cops? Yep. That was following them. Well, listen, if you ever have any legal problems, give me a call. They're following Kim. But who is it? I I think it's probably. A safe bet that it is the prosecutor for Jimmy's case. For Lalo's case. They're definitely following her. All I'm thinking about is I gotta stretch this out until you get there, but then I don't know. I kinda got caught up in it and then Cliff went for it. I mean, like, really went for it. What does that mean? Like money? I don't think he'll write a check himself, but he knows people. And I think he'll deliver. You're kidding. <laughs> I know. How great is this that? This is unbelievable. <laughs> so what was the... Are we on a roll or are we on a roll? <laughs> Jeez. What was her offer? You ever feel like you're being followed? When I dropped Wendy off at the motel, she thought she was being watched by some undercover cops. But then when I drove away, that same car was behind me. Right after I spotted them, they disappeared. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. You think we're wicked? So I'm using my satellite office at Juan Taboa and Skyline. I'm letting a nail salon you know, use the lobby. So Juan Tabo. That's Meet where uh, Gail lived on hey, Juan Tabo Avenue. How's it hanging, Steve-O? Shoes, belt, jacket. Sorry, what? Shoes, belt, jacket. Seriously? Since when? It's procedure, sir. Sir? <laughs> They're on your ass. What is this? A hearing change request form. Hey, come on, it's me. They're on his ass. Somebody put the word out. I'm sure it was the prosecutor. Hey, Hannah Banana. Pay yourself. Damn, they are pissed. What's up? Bill's going to give him the scoop. Voila. What the hell is going on? I like you better when you're just a regular bottom feeder. But this. This? What is this? I understand advocating for your client. Deep in my heart, I get it. But you scammed the court. You scammed the judge. And for what? To get a murdering cartel psychopath back out on the street? It's just... wrong. Uh-oh. big talk, Bill. Prove it. 
Prove it, Bill. I wonder if we're gonna see a flashback to Chuck. Okay, so the meetings? I'll go. Great. It's about time Chuck had a word on this show. Tuesday, nine a.m. sharp. There it is. She's just going to walk straight up to him. I feel like I recognize the guy on the right. Are you following me? What are you, APD? You know what? I think you're following me. And if you're not going to identify yourselves, then I'm calling in your plates because I feel threatened. Sorry if we've disturbed you. You have a nice day, man. I felt like I recognized him, but I can't place it. He could be just a random goon. Damn, even Bill is disgusted with him. See you then. Yeah, he's going to start getting all the business now. Speedy justice for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do have an opening today. Oh, hold on, I'm getting another call. Colorful. That's all. To see Saul Goodman. What was his name? Ski skis. You're Saul. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Spooge? It's Spooge. Just Spooge. It's just Spooge. Spooge. Um, Gail Marengo? Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there a Dante? All done for today? Yeah. There you go. Just keep it, Shelby. Thanks, Kim. See you tomorrow? You bet. They're gone. I'm sorry? I thought that was him. The two men that were following you. They're gone. I thought that was him in the background, but I was like, this is another bald, bald guy. I have men watching you and your husband. Oh. I'm not with the police, and as far as I know, they're not investigating either of you. I do know that you've been up to a few things that you probably would rather keep private. I don't care. Lalo Salamanca. Lalo Salamanca's dead. He isn't we're watching anyone in my contact that includes you and your husband most likely you'll never reach out he's got bigger fish to fry and who do you work for is this their first that's the first time meeting I said i would answer anything i can why did he go to jimmy you're first. the guy from the desert the one who was out there with Jimmy. Why are you telling me this and not him? Because I think you're made of sterner stuff. <laughs> I do know you. You worked in the parking booth at the courthouse. That's right. You're the attendant. 
I was. She's observant. That actually makes me feel better. Watching them. Mike's got your back. But shit, yeah, Lalo's alive. I don't think a single one of you motherfuckers in the comments was correct. Me included. Nobody said Mike. Is... Yeah, this is Gus's spot. Okay, so somebody's watching Gus. Is it Gus's guys? It's got, I guess it's, it's, yeah, Gus has got people watching his house. That would make sense. But the family that lives in that house, he's, they gotta know something. Oh, shit. Smart. He's getting tired of living like this, I guess, in fear. Yeah, let's see what kind of secret shit you got. <laughs> so cool. so weird that they oh so that guy goes into his house and pretends to be him in case there's an assassination attempt what a... so he doesn't even live there he lives next door at least for now it may be it's always like that so awesome he's not there just to make french fries i need guys in close he's not up to boy your standards i'll find a replacement oh so that's First hilarious man. i've got guys working 18 hour days all over town two weeks we haven't had a tickle and my new office potentially Come on. Hey. What do you think? It's small. It's dirty. And this whole place smells funny. But the courthouse is five blocks away. You can't get to MDC without driving past. Parking is good. Bell Bond Row isn't far, and uh, Taco Cabeza is just around the corner. Might be a diamond in the rough. Just promise me you won't move the toilet. Why is she not telling him, though? There it is. All right. And. Why wouldn't Mike tell him? Like, what is the point of keeping Jimmy in the dark for either of them? Oh, shit. Fuck. Okay, uh, that... Why was that titled Hit and Run? That's confusing. I'm wondering if... That's going to make more sense when we know all the titles. So, Mike is watching him just for protection. I don't exactly know why he's not going to Jimmy. And why is Kim not telling Jimmy? But now Kim should know that Jimmy should not rat. 
Well, maybe now she's more worried and thinks he should rat. It's going to be interesting to see what Kim thinks Jimmy should do. Knowing what she knows. Uh, I like the scene with uh, Gus going into the other house. I'm wondering if that is a new or if it's... I, I, I'm thinking it's new now that uh, Lalo's out. Uh, or now that Lalo's possibly looking for him. The couple, though, I'm wondering if... I guess maybe he just paid them off. Maybe they really do live there. They didn't even acknowledge his existence. Which is so odd. Surely they'd have some fucking questions. And, I, I mean, if those are his real neighbors... And he's paying them to do this. That puts them at danger. He can't, you know, he's now exposed himself that he's into something he shouldn't be into. So maybe uh, they were part of it from the get-go. Maybe, I mean, yeah, that, that underground tunnel, he didn't just fucking build that. That's got to be a part of the plan from the beginning. Hmm, what else? Howard, poor Howard, he's getting screwed. I thought they were going to do something with this car, uh, in along the lines of a hit and run because that was the name of the episode. But that's weird to name the episode that. That episode went by very quickly and seemed a little weirdly not slower, but we didn't get a whole lot of information out of that episode. But we got. Uh, Kim and Mike face to face for the first time. Well, other than the fact that he worked at the toll booth, I love that she recognized him and remembered that because Kim would, because she's observant. She's a G. And I like that Mike was like, "You're made out of." I don't know what the word he said was, but he's basically like, "You're you're made out of stronger stuff than Jimmy," <laughs> which is true. Oh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen now. Um, now when is Lalo going to make his move? What move is he going to make? And everybody seems to pretty much believe that Jimmy knew that he was a cartel, that he was defending somebody from the cartel and a murderer. They're all treating him like a, a pariah if I use that word correctly there um I don't think he cares now I think he did and then he got paid by a lot of customers so I don't think he gives a shit anymore and I don't think they can prove it anyway so huh. I don't know where, where this goes from here Nobody guessed that that was Mike's guys in the comments from the last uh, episode. Nobody guessed that correctly, including myself. Which is something I love about this show. You, I mean, the writing, you never really know what the hell they're going to do. Uh, well, I guess that's going to do it for me, guys. Um, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. And I will catch you on the next one. See ya.